This is Dr. Cassidy, and I'm going to go over how to find scholarly sources for your research project, your patient education project. So first of all, what is a scholarly source? It's um, something that was written by experts in the field, often related to research studies, clinical trial, and usually peer-reviewed. Peer-reviewed means that a bunch of other um, experts in that field as well who aren't affiliated with the authors, aren't affiliated with any of the work that was done or if it's clinical trial, whatever they're trialing. And they are just experts that read over the paper um, together and um, individually and look for errors, miscalculations, um, statistics being used that really aren't answering the correct question. Um, potential biases or potential conflicts of interest, anything that would make this piece of work not considered a reliable source. So they'll go through and, and peer review that. So not all journal articles or not all um, textbooks or things like that are scholarly sources, uh, I'm sorry, are peer reviewed. But if they are peer reviewed, that's just held to a higher standard. Okay, so where to find um, articles? First, if you come right from the um, HCC main page and click on students, you can scroll down to the library. And from the library, we're going to be looking uh, for databases. So scroll down to databases, and we specifically are looking for nursing databases. This brings you right to the um, home page for the nursing section of the library, and from here you can get into the different databases that they offer. I recommend either using CINAHL, which is the Cumulative Index for Nurses and Allied Health Literature, or Medline, which has um, the other disciplines um, in the medical field. So when you open it up, you'll get, um, come to um, boxes you can just put in. Say you're looking for, you're going to do your patient teaching on heart failure. And let's see. Let's see. Cannot type. Self-management. And then you can uh, restrict it otherwise. So you really want to keep your articles to things to, within the past five years. So you just put in the years here to um, keep out other years. Here is where you can select that the, um, they be peer reviewed. So I just click that box. If what you're doing is treated or taught differently in other parts um, in um, Europe, you might want to so restrict it to the United States. If you were doing something specific to pediatrics, you could um, select something here. And once you have all the restrictors on that you want, that you just click search, and it'll bring you to a page with um, articles on. And all of the searches that you, the restrictors that you put are on the left side of the page, so you can edit those here as you need. So once you're in um, this page. Oh, I did want to show you. So this is if you're looking at at CINAHL, and you can see that I'm in CINAHL because it's right up here. Now, when you do a search in Medline, it it uses the same format. It's using this EBSCOhost to search for the data the um, journals, but it, the databases are different. So this is Medline. So I'm going to find different articles in here. So once you um, get here, these are the articles on this page, and you just click on. You can, you know, look at the titles, and if something interests you, you're like, oh, well, that might be something that would be beneficial. You can open up, and then what I do is I just read the abstract to start, because that gives me a good idea of what is in this paper. So if you read that and you're saying, yep, this is definitely something I think I want to use, you can um, come over here to find the full text. Um, this one, you can get it from other databases or from PubMed. It looks like I can get it right from PubMed, so I just click on that. And here, it brings me right to the article itself. The other thing I can do back from this page is I can get the um, citation that I need for my reference page. So we are we use here in nursing, we use APA. So make sure you scroll down and use the APA 7th edition one. And all you have to do is just copy it, and you can um, uh, paste that right into your reference page. I did on the, um, yeah, right here on the instructions, I have a uh, template of a reference page for you, and this is already formatted. It's in Times New Roman. It's 12 font. It has a one-inch border around it, double-spaced. 
has references centered on the top, and these are already, um, the paragraphs are hanging, meaning that the first line is on the left edge, and every line under that in the paragraph is, in, is indented. So those are two examples that when you do use, you can, you'll just erase those, but I'm just going to go ahead and paste this here. You'll see that it comes in with this um, weird highlighting when you do it from there, so I just want to take that away and change it to the right color, and it also came in as Arial in 10. So that's all I do and fix it now. It is set up just exactly how I need it for my um, reference page. So if I just paste this in without formatting, and you can definitely do that too, and this is how I do it, if you know which parts of it need to be italicized, so like I know that the on this reference that is a journal article, then the journal and the volume number get italicized, and that's here then you can do that because you're going to lose all the format if you do it without formatting. If you don't know, then you should just keep the formatting and um, you can right click and get rid of that. Uh, keep the formatting and just put everything back to the Times New Roman 12. Okay. Um, let me see what else to do. The other place you can go to um, find out how they should be formatted. You can come here to this APA style.apa.org and this um where is it? Re oh right down here has reference examples. So you just click on here and if you're doing online you can check there or if you're doing um, journals or books and you I'm assuming you'll be using your um book from this class. Why isn't this open? Here we go. Um, so right here is journal articles. So if I click on that, um, just click on the journal article, and this shows me how it should be formatted for my reference page. The other thing I wanted to show you from the um, nursing homepage here at the library is that they there is a citation tool is as well here um, my bib citation generator so when you come in here you just want to make sure that you are under the APA seventh format so click on that and you're in the right format there and then you can um, add citations here so you can do a website books journals videos so say I was at a website um, like if I was at the CDC and I was trying to, I wanted to cite this page. You can just copy and paste the, um, where'd it go? Copy the URL and just paste it right in here and search for it. Yep, this is what I wanted. So I'm just going to use this arrow over here, and then it shows up right here. And then from here, I can just copy it. And I want to use the, the bibliography entry, so I'm going to copy that. And again, I can come over to my reference page and paste it in. And this, you just right-click and do remove link to get rid of that. The other thing I wanted to show you was Google Scholar. So if you just type in Google Scholar, it'll bring you to here. And from here, you can also find articles as well. So again, the same doing heart failure management. If I just click on that, it's going to bring me um, to this. And you can, over here on the left side, you can limit your searches. So I want to do last five years, so I'll do um, since 2018. And you can see right here it also I can save the save it to my library so if you want to create a library you can do that here I can also cite it so if I click on this and it tells me so here's my APA format so again I can just copy right into my reference sheet and paste and it is not the correct, it's not time, but I can just put time numeral and put it to 12. And this, uh, 
nope, I lost, here we go. All right, back to Google Scholar. So this also um, tells you right here if it has the full text over on the side. So if I click on this one, I'm going to open it another link so I can see what happens. It brings me here, but it says I have to buy the article, so I'm not going to do that. But this one right here says it has the full text available. If I click on that. And I can read the full text right here. Okay, and that's it. So that's how to find the articles that you'll need for your uh, project. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Email is the best way. Thank you.